community groups to input specific geographic parameters and receive crime updates three times a day. New Flint Police Facebook and Twitter accounts will be started this month. See, we need to share more information and also to connect more with the community. We have Blue Badge and Flint Neighborhoods United. There will be new trainings offered for crime watches to patrol as eyes and ears and rapidly report any criminal behavior. FPD has radios that are in the process of being narrow banded for this effort. And we've submitted an application for a grant to cover this initiative with the expectation of starting the advanced community watches this spring. We have an expanded effort with Crime Stoppers through the Crime Stoppers of Michigan. You can call 1-800-SPEAK-UP with tips to solve crimes with a guarantee of it being 100% anonymous. Flint Crime Stoppers did an outstanding job that we need the expanded resources of the Crime Stoppers of Michigan that they could bring to the table. Crime Stoppers of Michigan has been in Flint and Genesee County for exactly uh, one month, and we've already received 30 tips. So they've been submitted for rewards, and that expanded marketing program is working with your help. It's part of the new mission of the Flint Police Department to act in partnership with our community to protect life and property by striving to prevent crime and preserve peace, order, and safety. Partnerships, community, protection, crime prevention, peace. This sounds to me like a 21st century police department. Thank you, Chief. Now, we all need to stand up and be part of this. Volunteer with Blue Badge. Contribute to the new Flint Police Foundation. Get involved with lifelines. Call tips into Crime Stoppers. Check the online crime stats. Check on your neighbor. This is how we're going to get Flint off of the top 10 worst per capita crime list with this year's results. Of course, we also need to create jobs. And our goal for creating jobs is ambitious. We aim to have a growing and diverse economy that spurs innovation and small business development, along with an education system that prepares our workforce, Flint's residents, for jobs paying a livable wage. So we link economic development and education because we know that human development is economic development. We know where we need to start. Community schools and community education is objective one, strategy one. And all of us who grew up here in Flint know that community schools work. They work for youth, they work for families, they work for communities, and they work for employers. So community education must be there in the fall of 2014 when the doors of the Flint Community Schools open for our students. The City of Flint is already requesting proposals from community partners who will work with the Flint Community Schools using federal community development block grants to provide community education services. Superintendent Larry Watkins himself is a product of the community education system and a graduate of Flint Central High School, I should add. And he recognizes that it is fundamental. So I urge other partners to pledge themselves to this work. We must work together this year to get this done. Community schools, objective one, strategy one for growing a diverse and growing economy. Objective two is to increase the basic skills of our youth and workforce. And one of the major successes right here in our community is the Youth Build program that's moved into the city's Oak Business Center. Metro Community Development initiated this in Flint and is one of the leading programs across the country. Today, 
a new group of youth build participants started and they are going to help us meet this objective. I want to recognize Metro's director, Ravi Yalamancha, who's here with us. Thank you for believing in our youth. Of course, the city of Flint has to step up and do its part too. We have a new unified Department of Planning and Development that's been established to lead our public economic development efforts make Flint more business friendly, and ensure equitable development all across Flint. I want to especially recognize the inaugural head of the new Department of Planning and Development Department, Megan Hunter, who also serves as our Chief Planning Officer and was the primary architect of our master plan. Ms. Hunter, thank you. I also want to recognize the Flint and Genesee Chamber and the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. We meet every Friday morning at 8 a.m. in my office to go over every job creation and investment prospect for Flint. Over the past four years, this has resulted in more than 4,905 created and retained jobs, along with over $1.5 billion in capital investments through 2013. Our total capital investment will be over $2 billion after this year, 2014. And our performance this past year with job growth and retention is that we achieved 60% more than the previous year. So we're on a strong upward swing. Our latest success is with the American Pipe Company coming to the former Buick site. And I don't know about you, but I look forward to seeing people going back to work where there used to be an empty concrete slate. So when you, when you see Flint and Genesee in the light of cooperation, innovation, and opportunity, you will believe that we can do this as part of our five-year action plan. Action items. It's time for a promise zone for Flint. That's right, gentlemen. Thank you for your leadership. That's our state representative and state senator who are helping to lead that charge. Our state legislators are really stepping up on this. It's time to update all of Flint's business ordinances so that we're truly business friendly and redevelopment ready. The city council clerk and city attorney are working to get this done in the next few months. This is actually a commitment I made when I first came into this office. The first act after being sworn in was to walk downstairs and hang an open for business sign on the front doors of City Hall. So now, it took some time, but we have a plan. We'll have a streamlined process. We have strong partners. And we're turning this economy around and creating jobs right here, right here in Flint. A strong and smart economy. That's the sustainability we need going forward. And for those of you who are looking for work, consider this, since I'm talking a lot today about volunteering. A recent study by the Federal Corporation for National and Community Service Office of Research and Evaluation found that active volunteers have a 27% higher rate of finding a job after being out of work than non-volunteers. And volunteers without a high school diploma have a 51% higher rate of finding employment. This research shows that volunteering increases a person's uh, social network and their skill set. And this helps to level the playing field for the unemployed when they apply for jobs. So volunteering is an opportunity multiplier. Action area three. It's time to address blight. As I see it, blight has become a clear and present danger to our future. It affects our safety our neighborhoods, businesses, youth. 
You see, these abandoned buildings that surround us are offering shelter to crime and drugs. These scrapped out buildings in our neighborhoods endanger our children when they walk to school. We can no longer dwell in these dangerous remains of the past. This is not a new problem in Flint, but the scale of the challenge has pushed the threat level up. And it's time for an all-out battle against blight. It's, it's us versus abandonment. It's us versus scrappers. It's us versus illegal dumping. It's us who care against those among us who have given up. St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? Ladies and gentlemen, today I blow the trumpet against blight. Today, Flint declares a war on blight. I'm asking you to enlist in the army that will defeat blight in Flint over the next five years. Are you with me? There are over 20,000 20, homeowners living in their homes in Flint. This is a great asset to build from. And many people don't realize that we still have that core in place. Last year, with the Cities of Service alone, we had 593 volunteers who were on the front lines. 24 blocks were revitalized. 1.8 million pounds of trash and waste was removed. 15 trees were planted. 57 new green spaces were started. 25 homes were boarded. 4,500 square feet of graffiti was removed and 122 previously blighted properties were cleaned and maintained. So this is a strong start in our campaign to beat blight in Flint over the next five years. Last year there were 670 demolitions between the city of Flint and the land bank. And this year we're going to more than double that. We're ready for more volunteers in all branches of the service. Cities of Service, Keep Genesee County Beautiful, the Park Tenders Program and Tree Tenders Program, Flint Neighborhoods United, and all the groups that are already in this fight. The demolitions are funded by the federal government through the state. And the champion for us in Washington, D.C. has been our new congressman, Dan Kildee. You know, folks, it, it's unprecedented for a first-year congressman to achieve these results. And his success is a great testament to his trust with the President's administration and his leaders right here in the state. Congressman Dan Kildee, thank you for your willingness to keep fighting for Flint. We need you as a general in this fight. I know we can count on you. Now, the call to action, that's the easy part. Here's what we have to do. The battles in front of us are tough. After this year's work, we estimate that we will have approximately 5,500 residential structures and 400 commercial buildings that are still in need of demolition. So we need $70 million, Congressman, <laughs> to get that done. We got five years to do it. Total blight elimination means cleaning up vacant properties, creating new green spaces, and beautifying our neighborhoods. Regular mowing on all of the 12,000 vacant plus lots in the city of Flint calculates to a need over the spring, summer, and early fall to about 10, excuse me, about 100,000 cuts and cleanups. Last year, our community groups made an incredible start with over 10,000. So we've got to aim to double that every year 
for the next three years to maintain all the properties in Flint. It's an incredible challenge, but that's the battle lines that have been drawn. So to do this, the Cities of Service will be supporting the community tool shed at Salem Housing, where mowers and equipment can be borrowed free of charge. And I'm also proud to announce today that we have an additional new field captain, a chief service officer for the City of Flint through the Cities of Service initiative, and an executive on loan program with the Boys and Girls Club and the National Service Accelerator that's funded by the CS Mott Foundation. This comes at no cost to the city's taxpayers. See, we're smaller, but we're stronger, and we're smarter. And using volunteers and collaborating and investing is how we'll get this work done. So I'd like to introduce to you Mary Zumbrunnen. Her first official day is tomorrow. She comes to this position from having been working on the service accelerator with national service members, AmeriCorps, VISTA, Senior Corps, and other service efforts that have connected over 650 national service members and over 2,000 additional volunteers with the needs of our community. So I'm pleased she's joining our team. You see, there's a role for everyone in the Army advancing against blight. Neighborhood revitalization is everyone's responsibility, yet we know that the city does have to provide the leadership and the tools to be effective. So I'm proud to announce the second annual Love Your City campaign this month to give the entire city a spring cleaning. We need a strong spring campaign to get off to a good start and not lose any ground. So in partnership with the Cities of Service and Republic Services, we'll have three unlimited curbside pickup weeks in May. Unlimited large items, May 5th through 9th. Unlimited bagged trash, May 12th through the 19th. And unlimited bundled branches and lawn debris that next week before Memorial Weekend. Now I'll tell you folks, we have to use these unlimited pickups. When I drive down the street on Monday, May 5th, I want to see truly unlimited large items on the curbs. <laughs> and on the 19th, I want to see unlimited bundles of branches and bagged lawn debris. May is the month to make this happen. So put it on the calendar. These are the first three weeks of blight battling. Don't go up north fishing. <laughs> Don't head down south to see your family. Stay right here in Flint. Take out the trash. Bag that garbage that's down the street. Clean up the vacant lot on the block. I want to see Republic working overtime to keep up with us and our Love Your City Month. Of course, we're also doing the annual tire collection effort like we did last year. That's on May 17th. So don't plan that weekend for your family reunion. We need you to help get us out those old abandoned tires that are littered across this community. It's a very dirty job, but somebody has to do it. Last year we collected over 10,000 tires on our pickup. And that was with, I think, about a two-week notice. So with two months, imagine what we can do. We also have the Love Your City application for community groups that want to adopt a block that's coming out this coming weekend at the Keep Genesee County Beautiful Conference. And I want to thank the Ruth Mott Foundation, which has been a champion of this work for a number of years and has provided support for this network. There, there's so many ways you can make a difference in this blight battle. You can take care of the vacant property next to your house, shovel the snow, mow the yard, pick up the trash. You can report blight and code violations to the city's blight manager, Raul Garcia. Can help organize a cleanup for Love Your City Month. You can apply for a mini grant from the Community Foundation, who's a great partner with us in implementing the master plan. This is how we're going to fulfill our vision for healthy neighborhoods all across the city over the next five years. Next, infrastructure. Roads, pipes, water, trails. This is another high priority for Flint. 
We have set a visionary goal. 